Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today's lecture is continuation of the last lecture that is dermatosis of neonate. So in this lecture, we are also going to discuss a few uh, diseases which are uh, typically involving the neonates. The first is the anetoderma of prematurity. Anetoderma is uh, the term which is used, to, used for a focal loss of elastic tissue in middermus that results in localized areas of macular depression or pouch-like herniation. So anetoderma is basically loss of elastic tissue. Anetoderma may occur in the preterm babies appearing at or soon after birth. And the differential diagnosis of anetoderma is a scar as a result of trauma or aplasia cutis congenita. There is no known treatment of anetoderma. You know that uh, many of the children who are born with the um, um, with, uh, um, neonatal joinders, they are given phototherapy. And this phototherapy causes certain problems in the neonate. And these include red rash, which is the macular red lesions all over the body, which is uh, which becomes more prominent as the yellow color fades, as the bilirubin reduces. Ultraviolet uh, light induced burns may also appear red. Then as a result of phototherapy, the skin becomes hyperpigmented. And this skin tanning is especially seen in those infants which are born with type 4 skin. It is also known as the bronze baby syndrome which is uh, due to definitely an underlying hepatic disease. And the bronze baby syndrome has a differential diagnosis of uh, carbon baby or gray baby syndrome, which is uh, the term used for central cyanosis. The phototherapy may also uh, cause bolus eruptions, which um, are due to certain drugs, and they can be, they can mimic uh, congenital porphyrias. Then EB-like uh, eruption may also occur as there is transient uh, porphyrinemia uh, after repeated transfusions in severe hemolytic disease of newborns. Localized purpura on exposed site is also a feature of transient uh, protophyrinemias, secondary to transfusions. Um, the neonates may develop atrophic lesions. These lesions will be different from the anetoderma because atrophy is due to the collagen defect. And the uh, most typical and common is morphia, then atrophic dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance, cutis marmorata telangiectetica congenita, aplasia cutis congenita, anetoderma of prematurity, congenital erosive and vascular dermatosis, which heal with reticulate supple scarring, then um, medallion-like dermal dermocyte hematoma, congenital infections like herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster virus may result in atrophic scarring, focal dermo, dermal hypoplasia of golds, and neonatal lupus erythematosus. Though there is a long list of disorders that results in atrophic lesions in a neonate. Collodion baby. The collodion baby is a descriptive term that refers to an infant who is born encased in a tight, shiny, uh, plastic-like membrane. It may represent the first expression of some congenital forms of ichthyosis, and the commonest one is autosomal recessive ichthyosis. The incidence of collodion baby is one per 100,000 deliveries and it is present at birth, and there is slight male predominance. Up to 10% of the babies which are born with a collodion membrane will later, will later develop an entirely normal skin. 
but 90% of those will go on to develop either lamellar ichthyosis or non-bullous ichthyosiform erythroderma. Other ichthyosis may also develop. They include Netherton syndrome, loricrine keratoderma, and jogeran larsen syndrome. A transient collodion membrane is also reported in Gaucher's disease, which is a metabolic syndrome. Metabolic storage disease. So pathology. Histologically, the membrane uh, shows hyperkeratosis, orthokeratotic stratum corneum. So it is the diagnosis is obvious clinically, and there is no need to go for a skin biopsy in a usual case. Genetics. Early genetic testing is also not advisable. An underlying ichthyosis phenotype will usually reveal itself in first few weeks of life after the collodion membrane has shed. At this point, specific genetic testing may be useful to confirm the diagnosis. So the clinical features. The presentation uh, in a baby is that of an erythroderma. Uh, erythrodermic skin, which is encased in a rigid, shiny, glistening, yellowish, translucent covering resembling a clear plastic film. It appears that the baby is wrapped in a plastic film. The tightness of membrane may cause ectropion. Eclabion is the turning out of the lips due to tightness of the membranes around the oral uh, mucosa and it may interfere with feeding. Nostrils may also be blocked. So this is a collodion membrane baby and uh, some shedding of the membrane is seen at the abdomen. Restriction of skin over fingers, hands, toes and feet uh, result in immobility and it could interfere with the blood flow as well. Surgery may be required in case of acute ischemia to free the constricting bands. In the absence of surgery, these constricting bands can lead to amputation and they are called as the pseudo -anhims. During the first day or two, tightness of skin on the thorax may impede the respiration and occasionally respiratory distress may result and uh, which is also induced by the nasal obstruction. Within few hours of the birth, the membrane starts drying and cracks and bleeding occur as a result of fissioning. And in another one to two days, it starts to shed, and extensive sheets of large brown scales are shed. Um, but uh, in addition to shedding, new membrane is also formed. The shedding is more or less complete by the end of four weeks. After that, the typical feature of one of the several types of ichthyosis become uh, apparent in next few weeks or months. So the first differential diagnosis of collodion baby is the harlequin ichthyosis, in which the casing or membrane is much thicker and that typically encases the baby not in a plastic membrane but rather in an armor with deep fissures. So harlequin ichthyosis uh, show fusion of the fingers and toes and thick palmoplantar skin. The ears are bound down to the scalp, and um, um, which are usually free in case of collodion babies. The mouth is open. Ectropion is not present in harlequin fetus. The skin does not dry out and does not come out, and death is the eventual, uh, eventual uh, outcome in harlequin ichthyosis as a consequence of secondary infection and respiratory failure. Complication. The collodion baby is at risk largely because of consequence of losing the skin barrier. This result in falling, impaired temperature regulation, which may result in morbidity and mortality, insensible water loss, hypernatremic dehydration and acute renal failure, and septicemia, both by bacterial infection and candidal infection. So percutaneous toxicity from topical me me medication because of increased absorption from the skin. Respiratory failure as a result of obstruction from the nose or difficulty in uh, breathing. And intrapartum aspiration of squamous debris shed into the amniotic fluid. 
So immobility of chest may also result in pneumonia. With good neonatal care, mortality figure have fallen from 50% in 1960s to less than 5% today in Western world. Management. The baby should be nursed in an incubator at high humidity. Great attention is uh, to be paid uh, to the fluid and electrolyte balance. In severe cases, fluid therapy should be given intravenously and less severe cases by NG tube. Peritoneal dialysis may be required in case of renal failure. If fluid loss, loss is significantly reduced by frequent application of a lipid, which is a 50-50 mixture of uh, liquid paraffin and white soft paraffin. Uh, it is better to avoid any medicinal, um, medicinal content in this ointment. Frequent oiling of the skin increase mobility and comfort and accelerate healing of fissures and reduces the risk of secondary infection. Avoid the tropical products that contain active compounds like urea or salicylic acid as toxicity is a real risk due to absorption. So prevention of infection has already been stressed. Skin punctures should be kept to the minimum and vascular access should be avoided. Deep fissures are likely to become infected if inflamed. So regular swabs should be done for bacteria and candida and if found to be promptly treated. Band of tight skin constriction constricting the digits may require surgical division. Blueberry muffin, blueberry muffin babies or dermal erythropoiesis. This term is used to describe a characteristic eruption in neonates often present at birth, comprising of widespread purple-red oval or circular macules, papules, and nodules reflecting dermal erythropoiesis. The blueberry muffin type of lesions has been recorded in number of congenital infections, congenital hematological disorders, and neonatal neoplastic conditions. There may be frank petechiae on the surface of some of the lesions. Favored site include the trunk, head and neck. The lesions generally fade into light brown macules within a few weeks of birth. So these are the typical lesions of blueberry muffin syndrome. Periorbital swelling can be observed in neuroblastoma and less frequently in congenital leukemias. Histologically, the lesions show focal dermal erythropoiesis. The reticular dermis contain aggregates of nucleated and non-nucleated erythrocyte precursors, but generally no cell of myeloid or megakaryocytic type. It is possible that this process represents persistence and exaggeration of dermal erythropoiesis that is a normal occurrence in early fetal development. Causes. So the causes, there are a long list of causes of blueberry muffin babies. Uh, the congenital infections include rubella, cytomegalovirus, coxsickie B2, syphilis, and toxoplasmosis. Hematological conditions include hereditary spherocytosis, rhesus hemolytic anemia, ABO, blood group incompatibility, twin-twin transfusion syndrome, and severe maternal anemia. Drug-induced causes if the mother is receiving erythropoietin, neoplasias include congenital leukemias, neuroblastomas, congenital rhabdomyosarcoma, and Langerhans cell histocytosis. Inflammatory conditions include new little lupus erythematosus and lysosomal storage disease include Gaucher's disease. Then the neonatal purpura fulminans. Purpura fulminans is rare but potentially lethal disorder that is characterized by rapidly progressive hemorrhagic necrosis of the skin associated with cutaneous vascular thrombosis. It is probably best referred to a form of DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, with associated purpura and hemorrhagic infarction function in the skin. 
This may result from genetically transmitted thrombophilic disorders, most commonly homozygous deficiency of protein C or less frequently protein S. Protein C resistance has also been reported due to mutation in factor V gene. In older children, purpura fulminans is highly characteristic feature of meningococcal septicemia, where it results from acquired deficiency of protein C and S. It may also occur as a result of acquired conditions like uh, antiphospholipid syndrome, galactosemias, severe congenital heart disease or warfarin therapy, which depletes these protein C and S. The neonatal, neonatal purpura fulminans can also rarely occur due to infections, such as group B streptococcus, methicillin-resistant staph aureus, varicella, measles, clepsella, enterobacter, and citrobacter. So in addition to the deficiency of protein C and S, infections, congenital heart disease, warfarin, and antiphospholipid syndrome are also causes. The earliest cutaneous changes in purpura fulminans are redness and ecchymosis, which appear 12, within first 12 hours of life, but their initial development may occasionally be delayed. The lesions rapidly progress into more or less symmetrical and well-defined lakes of confu confluent ecchymosis without petechiae. The lesions occur mostly on the limbs, particularly at the sites of pressure, but also appear on trunk, face and scalp. The onset is sudden and the lesions enlarge rapidly with coles and uh, development of hemorrhagic bully and central necrosis. So this is extreme case of purpura fulminans. There is surrounding redness and lesions are tender, patients are febrile, these infants are at risk of thrombosis in central nervous system and retinal vessels, and there is a substantial danger of internal hemorrhage, shock, and death. Management. Treatment should be carried out in specialist neonatal units. Early institution of extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO, with aggressive intensive care management has led to improved outcomes. Initially, fresh frozen plasmas or FFP should be given urgently in a dose of 10 to 15 ml per kg per 12 hour. If protein C deficiency is confirmed, onward therapy with protein C concentrate should be continued until the skin lesions have healed. Long-term treatment is with oral anticoagulants. Liver transplant can be curative. Any concomitant infection need to be treated as well. Thank you very much for patient listening. And uh, this chapter is not finished yet. And uh, in my next lecture, I will discuss all the neonatal infections. Thank you very much for the patient listening. Good day and have a good, good day and have a good nice weekend.